Right, hi everyone. This is another one that we did in class. Um, I can't remember how long ago. It was the crystals, and it was a really lovely, relaxing one to paint. And um, on my sheet, I show you. I did the three that I showed you in class. I did the three at the top, and then I did one of the quartz down below here. But I've got this space here that I wanted to fill with my with some of the other quartz that I had, but um, didn't have the time. But got loads of it now, so it's pretty lucky. Um, so I've just dragged them back out again um, and then what I, I just wanted to show you when they're on the paper they don't look like much you can't see anything but as soon as you hold it up can you see all those if I bring that closer I don't know if that's going to work you get these lovely rings it's not quite showing through on the video um, oh, <laughs> there we go um, can you see all the different rings and all the different colours it's even better in real life actually but um what I was gonna do I'm gonna show you um I showed you a little bit in class but if I painted one of these I thought maybe that's a really nice relaxing one that you might like to do at home as well um yeah so let's give that a go and uh, you might like to re come back to these that we did before um and have a little go it's a nice relaxing one Right, hi everyone. I've just put my paper down so and zoomed in, put the camera in place so you can see it. Um, well, I'm going to start off, I'm not even going to bother drawing it, I'm just going to go straight freehand. It doesn't matter, the, the wobblier the better, you want to get all those nice little wobbly edges around the side. So I'm just going to go for it. What I have got with me, I've got a number 10 round and I've got a number 4 round. So this nice big one I'm going to do to wet my area first of all. And then I'll use pick up the number four, the smaller one, just to start bringing in the details and things. So I'm just going to wet my brush with some clean, clean water that I've got inside here. And I'm just going to start making a bit of a wibbly wobbly shape. So can you see I'm not being really perfect, especially around the edges. Kind of wiggling the brush around. This is quite a long skinny one, so I can either, I can do it. Shall I bring it a bit longer? Yeah, let's go for it. Make it a little bit longer and skinnier, and then bring it up at the top here. And then what I'm gonna do, round the edges, it's a bit of a bluey gray round the edge, so I'm gonna, I know I always use it and I always love it. I'm just gonna pick up a bit of Payne's gray around the edge there. So just from my palette at the side here, if I just start dropping that in and if you can see, so I'm bringing it slightly over the wet area so that when it meets the wet area it bleeds in but then where it meets the dry area I'm getting this lovely hard edge. just take that round and I'm almost just dabbling at the side of the paper as well to give me that look that crinkly funny edge going round and then as soon as I run out of paint I just pick up a little bit more keep going round there we go all the way to the edge so that's giving me the basis of that. While that's still wet, what I'm going to do, actually, I'm just going to put a little bit of that colour in the centre. And the whole idea of this is that we just build up these rings and these layers around the outside. So that's one. And then I'm going to get this lovely pinky purpley colour. So I'm going to get some purple. I've got the uh, the Windsor purple, but any purple you might have. And if you haven't got purple, just mix up your blues and your reds. So the alizarin crimson is a lovely red to mix up um, with either your cobalt blue or your um, ultramarine blue. And then if I just bring some of that around. Let's get a little bit more. Like that. And 
And the whole idea of this, it's so relaxing because you can just literally dab the paint. Doesn't matter if it's perfect, doesn't matter if it's wonky. And it's just really nice relaxing to watch the paint blend and merge into each other. And here, look, you can see it's really merged. So I'm going to add a little bit stronger over the top there. Could bring some further out here. I'm going to put some in the middle there. So, you know what I'm like, I use any colour whatsoever that I've got. So I've just mixed up some of the pinky colour that I've got already in my palette. Um, I am lucky, I did treat myself to a magenta, so I've got magenta. But if you've got any permanent rose, scarlet lake, um, any of those kind of colours, they're brilliant for this as well. Any really vivid, bright colours you've got, go for it. And failing that, just use um, red. And then this is a great time to use your white as well. We never hardly ever use the white from our watercolour box. So um, mix a bit of your red with your white to give you a lovely pink as well. And just experiment, have fun with it. Again, just enjoy just mixing up different colours. Add a touch of blue, see what happens. And then I'm just going round. Going round. And then the idea is well, I'll try and keep it irregular. So I've got some areas that are fatter, some areas that are skinnier. And I'm going to pick up one that's slightly um, different colours. So I've got pink over here um, that I've mixed up for, I can't remember what project it was in class. And um, slightly different. So you're just varying all the different colours and tones every time you put a layer down. I might even as well and then I'll show you the difference so where it's wet and wet you're getting these lovely colours blending into each other which you, you do want but then you want so like this outside edge you want some harder edges coming through because um, in the quartz themselves that's what you're getting you get um, really lovely soft bits and then some darker bits coming round so if I show you that's the dark a bit around the outside the edge and then what I'll do pick up my brush with some water and just blend that in a bit in. so <laughs> that beeping was my washing machine I'm just praying it doesn't break down at the moment I think that'll be the worst time for a washing machine to break down. Um, right, but in the meantime, while I was sorting out the washing machine, um, this is dried off and this is brilliant to see because a lot of this, you, I've got some nice hard edges, but then a lot of it kind of blends into nothing. So what I'm going to do, that original purple that I was using, I'm going to pick that up again with a brush. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to have two brushes on the go that are similar colour. So one for applying my paint and then I'll have one clean one with water to blend in and I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna get my purple together which is just dried out so let me just get some water going in that and then I'm going to where I've got this lovely hard edge but it disappears a little bit I'm gonna just go around you know what I'm gonna make that a bit darker so I'm just gonna add a little bit more purple into my mixture Hopefully, yeah, that's a bit better. So, coming round, just going to join it up to here. And then with my other brush, with clean water, I'm just going to blend that in to get rid of that hard edge. There we go. And then I'll do the same. So where I've lost bits over here, I just come back, paint a little bit of a hard edge. And then join that up. And exactly the same, get some clean water on my brush and soften that hard edge.
and I'm going to do exactly the same in this inner bit. Actually, I'm going to go around that one again to give me a nice hard edge as well. And you'll all notice as well, working from home, this won't dry out as quickly as working in the classroom. When we're in the classroom, you have to work so much quicker because it's always warm in there, which is nice and toasty. But you've just got to work that bit quicker on your work because you get a bit more time at home. There we go. Right, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll switch the camera off because if they're too long, I can't upload them. Um, but I'm going to do another one um, in that centre in. So I started painting this and then I thought I'd just show for you. For those of you that um, just aren't as confident really, it's just a case of just going for it and enjoying it. So the other ones, I was following lines and following bits that I'd already done. But this one... Um, I've just made up a darker, like a pinky purpley mix, and um, I'm just going round. So you, you don't have to follow any specific lines. I'm just doing this really nice wobbly <laughs> um, line as I go around. And if you've got shaky hands, if you're having a shaky day, even better. Use that to your advantage on this one, and just let your hand shake away as you're going round. And then I only get to a certain point because I'm going to get hard edges otherwise. And then I just go back in with my clean wet brush. And then when I'm up to a point, I'm going to work from the top down because that's easier for me. Rather than always make things easy for you, rather than coming up here and carrying it up, I won't be able to paint as confidently. So I'm going to start from this top. And work my way down. And do you know what I think I'm going to do on this side as well? It's getting quite tight there. I'm just going to blend a little bit of this out and just leave that as a solid line. So feel free to experiment with parts of solid lines, parts blended. And if there's bits that haven't blended, just get that wet brush again and just work it into the paper, blending it in and just seeing what it does. There we go, that's looking nice. I feel like it needs some more in the centre, so I'm going to go around this centre bit. Oh, pick up a bit more paint. You'll get some nice interesting things happen as well. I don't know if you can see this. Where I've just gone round this centre bit, it's where this area is still wet, this pinky purpley colour is just blended into that purple mauve. And that's given me a really nice effect. Let's see if that blends in up there. Now that bit's dry up there. So if it's dry, just give it a little helping hand. There we go. And then what I'll do, I think I'll probably wait for that to dry and then do another little bit in that middle. Being so white in the middle there is a bit strange. Um, yeah. So while that one's been drying, I was just working on this one, adding a few more extra rings. And that's looking nicer as well. So just exactly the same what I was doing over there. Just increasing it, increasing it. And it having a mixture of the wet on wet and then the dry on the wet is really nice gives a nice contrast so if i come back to my purpley one i think that's there that you can all see it um so just going back to the center bit so the center bit's a bit too white and a bit too stark so what color should i grab ah i'm thinking that pinky that that pinky purpley color was really nice so let's get a bit of that going again on my brush And then 
is in the center. Again, that's looking a bit silly and a bit weird. So what I'm going to do, and this is the thing, whenever you work in, feel free to change it all the time. If you don't like it, just adapt it. I'm just going to softly blend that in. Yeah, and I like that a lot nicer. That's a lot better. So then, because this is all about adding layers, let's add another one. And mix up a little bit more paint. Where should we go? Let's add one round here. Mm -hmm, it's getting tight there. You know what? Do you see the difference? I'm going to flick brushes because this one I can get a finer point. Bring this down. Yeah, that's better. I can get right in there with this one. Yeah, it's going around. Let's go from the top there coming down. going to do blend some of that in and then with that color on the brush just make some of it thicker in areas and then again always keep things irregular never the same a little bit more up there Yeah, I think it's ready for a shadow. 